Hey everyone, welcome to the fifth edition of Conquest's tierless review. I'm Mecha. My tierless used to be very ugly, and now it still is, but at least the units are slightly in a better order. Uh, we got a big menu today, six units. Of course, if you've been following this, you know that we never end up doing all of them. Maybe today, it'll be one of the first times that we managed to do that. Uh, we got Mozu, we got Nyx, we got Selina, we got Baruka, we got Laszlo, and we've got Perry. Yeah, that's right. It's me, Editor Mecha, here to spoil the fun and tell you that no, we didn't get to do all these units today. Or at least is what I would say, but we actually did. Enjoy. And of course, I say we because I'm not alone. I'm joined by the great Zoran. How are you doing today, man? I'm doing well. Glad to be back. All right. I, I just want to have it on the record that Zoran thought we could handle all six of these. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's like we, we could probably speed round this. Why is that? Why do you think these are easier to talk about than the other units that we've done so far? Uh, well, there are certain similarities um, to some previous units and to each other. Um, so I, I think we can cover two at a time in a couple of cases here, or at least refer back to some of the things we discussed earlier. So and this is like the last batch of, I think, unpromoted first generation units. I think we've covered a lot of the topics that have to do with like how the, the campaign goes and you know milestones and promoting and what classes are useful and everything like that. So... Um, we don't have to rehash them. Yeah. yeah, there's definitely more of an overlap between these units than the, with any the units that we've discussed earlier from the actual early game. Uh, I think we still have Benny, Charlotte, and I guess Keaton is unpromoted, right? Oh yeah, you're but, right. Yeah. Yeah. But we those, I guess, are, are sufficiently different in some way. And you know, I, I don't want to try to fit nine people on the roster for today. Yeah. That seems a bit too much. <laughs> yeah. uh, I've used some of these units to varying degrees lately and not so recently. So I'm curious to see how those insights match up with the, the general uh, ideas uh, that exist in the Fates meta for these. So I guess we just we just start off with Mozu. Uh, I use Mozu for this uh, for this conquest Soyo draft that you're probably seeing in the bottom right here. As you've probably seen her appear a couple times already. It was my first time using Mozu throughout all of Conquest, and I enjoyed it so much. I just want to say it first. This is a really fun unit to use. I always kind of like the trainees in the casual playthrough. They never end up too high on a tier list, but it doesn't mean you can't enjoy them. It's really fun to see her grow into something really competent. And this approach to a early game growth unit, to a trainee kind of unit, is I think really cool. Because in most games, these units are bad in almost every way. Like their bases, their, even their growth in like Secret Stones trainees. Um, they have to play catch up because like, they're behind in level as well. So they promote later them to mothers to uh, their promoted classes. They're just bad in so many ways. But Mosu is only bad in a couple ways. She only has a couple detriments to her uh, from what I can found. The first one is that she really desperately wants an early heart seal to go from the awful villager class to the significantly better archer class. Mm -hmm. I feel like depending on when you recruit her, she probably wants the very first heart seal because being stuck in villager is so awful. But that depends on what ideal was the ideal time to recruit her and what's the ideal time to use those heart seals of course uh, we only briefly discussed the heart seal back with like elise and and jacob and felicia so it's probably worth going over that a little bit again with regard to mozu and the other big cost to her i guess is that i mean her bases aren't too great and depending on when you go to her paralog your audience probably don't gain too much xp off of the um faceless in her joining chapter but it's still probably more efficient to clear them out with people that are not mozu with her awful bases so there's like a slight cost of training her there. I would split that cost up into like the amount of turns you spend doing it and how much XP you end up giving to her because the XP I think is not super significant. So, you know, people don't really get much out of killing those faceless. You just save a couple turns, which I think I think a couple turns matters, but not as much as like saving turns isn't the end all be all only measurement we have of efficiency. So I don't think it matters that much that you spend a couple extra turns maybe in her paralog. And then once you've paid that cost, Archer Mozu kind of good in the early game, like shooting down flyers in chapter 10 and all sorts of other places. Uh, her defense growth is really good. So there's kind of a point in the game where she stops being a defensive liability and actually is able to aim you face things. I like that this game has a mini bow you can use to give her to kind of turn into an axe unit almost, because it's the same within the weapon triangle and she can enemy phase things. Uh, she has a bunch of good class options. She has one of the best class sets in the game for what I can tell, uh, between Archer, Sniper, Kinshi. Uh, those classes are fine in several maps, specifically Ninja, uh, but I also like the option of going, say, Master of Arms to get life and death for the massive strength stack. Uh, I plan to overkill Takumi with her, which she seems to be really easy to hit the benchmarks with. And there's probably a lot of other things that you can do as well. Uh, I like the merchant class too. I enjoyed uh, 
profiteering uh, gold bar every now and then in the first couple turns. It's a bit of a novelty, but I do like having a way to get extra gold because it's so easy to turn gold into something good in Conquest. So there's just a lot of things I like about Mozu. I'm not sure where this all ranks her because she still has more opportunity cost to use than most of the units in A tier and even B tier. There's not a lot of low-hanging fruit with Mozu like there is with, say, Fe or Archer, where you can use them in a way where you ditch them as soon as they fulfill their purpose, or maybe you can find some kind of long-term reclass for them, but generally they peak early on and you can get the most out of them at that point. Whereas for Mozu, that cost is loaded early and then you have to kind of put up with it until she becomes good. So it's kind of a reverse curve for most units, but she does hold up to late game enemies a lot better than a lot of the other units without, you know, too much complications I find. Like the late game enemies in Conquest, I often find them very intimidating, but it feels like Mozu hits the benchmarks for killing them a lot easier than others. So my gut feeling says she's still lower on the rankings compared to the other units, but I feel like the gap is smaller than for most units. All right, <laughs> rant over, what do you think? <laughs> I agree with just about all those points. Um, I think it is really interesting how, like, I mean, as you said, like the truth about like the opportunity cost of her paralog isn't really the experience per se, just because, especially if you don't do it immediately, your units are generally going to be so high in level to be like level nine or so and the faceless, I think are level six, um, that they don't get a ton of XP from killing a bunch of enemies. Like the, if you focused all the experience on a single unit, they might level up twice which is, like, not that impressive. Uh, but yeah, it, it, it takes some work to, to get her going if you want to use her paralog to do that. Um, like, it's not impossible to do that with something resembling, I guess you would call it efficiency, uh, but it, <laughs> to do it that way, you need some, like, serious planning. Yeah, you'd have um, to right. move the time you spend in the chapter itself to just pre-planning all kinds of uh, pair-up and dual start shenanigans, yeah. right? Yeah, um, and on the topic of when to do it uh i prefer doing it after chapter nine uh, partly because you get azura then um and having azura can both speed up the training part and um give her extra time to start work like training herself up to get inspiring song faster mm -hmm. which is kind of nice and that's not limited by the uh the enemy levels you just get the same experience for singing to people over and over um not that i would recommend sitting there and grinding singing but just using her every turn it helps. Um, but yeah, like, Mozu's really interesting because you, you can spend the time to train her up in her in her join chapter, in her paralog, and uh, if you do that, she becomes fairly competent fairly quickly. Um, but the, the big asterisk there is it, it really does take the archer reclass to be reasonably good. Um, it's possible to make her work in Villager. I've, I think I've shown that a few times. But it's... Uh, it looked more like yeah, Epi killing things than Mozu killing things. Let me put it that yeah, way. Yeah, it's 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 pretty awkward, and you're relying on the javelin a lot. Uh, partly because Mozu's um, like all of her starting stats are pretty bad, but her HP both starts bad and never gets good. Yeah, so, even, even by state fate standards, it's so awful. It's like 15 or 16 base, I think. She gets one shot by the face like in the chapter. And it's awful. Yeah, it's, it's like probably four or five points below where you'd want to be um, with with her growth. That, that means, like, being a melee combatant is just really awkward. But I, I think it's a, a really fun illustration of the difference between being bowlocked and being landslocked and how, against all odds, being bowlocked is just way better in this game. Yeah, um, it, it kind of depends on the chapter, right? There's some chapters where you have a lot of enemy axes, for example. I guess no, that would be, it would still be bad to be landslocked. Hold on, hold on. Too, yeah. I need a better um, example, but there's probably a, a case for lands yeah, somewhere. Yeah, there are places where you fight a lot of swords. Um, but the places where you do that also make bows good. Like I can think of a couple spots in the the medicine pot chapter where there are sort there are sword uh, or what are they called uh, samurai in this yeah. game, um, and like the opera house map with the with Kumagera where there's a whole bunch of samurai in one spot, but there's also a bunch of flyers. The opportunities to be a, a below average lance unit are just not very good, but a statistically below average bow unit are still pretty solid. Um, so you don't have to train Mozu in Paralog 1. Uh, you could even bring her in at level 1 in Chapter 10. If you reclass her and give her a bronze bow plus 1, she, she one-shots the, the Sky Knights anyway. Uh, which is pretty cool. And she can get like 5 or 6 levels on, the, on that basis alone. Uh, without even really costing you turns, because it's a 
That's 11 turns no matter what. Um, but I, I think you're right that Mozu still ends up being sort of worse than everyone else we've talked about so far. Um, I think of her as kind of with, within the, the divisions we have going here, I would probably place her as like the dividing line between B and C tier. Uh, I would give her the nod and say she's the bottom of B. Um, because she is pretty solid and you don't actually have to waste time training her. Um, but it is a sort of a similar situation to Odin where if you're trying to go really fast, you can train her up. It's just you're only doing it for her own sake. It's not really going to accomplish anything for you in the long run other than just having a trained Mozu. Yeah. She she can be on the fastest playthrough, but she can't make the fastest playthrough happen, right? Yeah. Um, and her class set's really cool. You mentioned like all the damage stacks she can get. Uh, getting plus 29 from her own class set and nothing else is pretty amazing. Um, it, it does make Mozu or her kids very good candidates to kill the final boss uh, if you want to do that and even gets the benefit of certain blow so you're never going to miss which is awesome um but I, a lot of the th same things we talked about with effie apply like it's cool to do the, the the archer route especially going kenshi and like going that with that player phase oriented setup um and you're not limited to just player phase because there are places where you can use archer sniper merchant and that kind of stuff on enemy phase um but it's definitely less effective than the like the premium enemy phase builds so it works it's fun to play that way it's very interesting um mozu can be basically competent without much like effort on your part if you if you are able to devote um uh, one of the two early heart seals to her but like everyone in this game is pretty good so yeah <laughs> just about everyone i think we're going to talk about someone who i think is worse yeah uh I'm I'm afraid of that. <laughs> but uh yeah she's like pretty good she with investment that's true for just about everyone i don't think it's really necessary and the kinds of things where she's you might think she's special like being a sniper it's that, that is unique in this in this game you can pass it to other people like Effie, and that's cool. But you never need that to accomplish what you what you're trying to do in the mm -hmm. campaign. Is, uh, is sniper her best class path? Do you go like sniper and then Kinshi? Um, for me, I think it depends what I'm doing with my other heart seals. I, like for Mozu's own sake, it probably is better to go sniper first and then Kenshi when flight becomes important. Um, which like is a twenty is important stretch, right? The, the, the very late game. Yeah. Um, like, I, I would probably rather have her just in Sniper for most of the mid-game, even though Flight can be helpful there as well. Um, but that is two Heart Seals for her. And in practice, I mean, I feel like it's really helpful if you're going to use the... If you're going to use her at, at all, I think it's really helpful to make her a Kenshi for Chapter 20. Um, so you kind of got to weigh the, the cost of spending two heart seals on her to make that happen if you're going to go sniper first um versus uh the idea of just just go to kenshi make use of that it's perfectly competent um in the mid game and then go pick up sniper skills later um, yeah that makes sense uh for late game heart seals it's mostly just a gold cost rather than there's only yeah it's seals. not that significant a problem after chapter 20 to be honest so it's it's really just like okay do i do i want to be sniper and make it easier to hit benchmarks and be more survivable in places like chapter 17 versus do I want to be a Kenshi for chapter 20 and maybe chapter 19, which, where it is feasible to be a Kenshi knight, even though you're, you're weak, you have beast weakness, because uh, you can't exploit the terrain to shoot stuff from safety if you want to. Yeah, that kind of sucks. Sniper's going to be useless there. Mm -hmm. There was one thing um, I mentioned that she can kind of become enemy phase competent-ish uh, on my playthrough. Mm -hmm. I just remembered I gave her a robe at one point that might have increased her bulk to the point where it was more viable because her defense late game is probably kind of okay-ish after a while. Yeah. But like, what is your experience with Moses? Is she actually able Is she actually able to like enemy phase late game reliably or is that just me getting lucky? Uh, I think she can generally. Um, not in Kenshi Knight. Uh, giving her Seraph robe is big though. Interestingly, Merchant is maybe her best class for 
general enemy phase combat because it's really it's it's almost like general style in terms of its stat distribution. It's pretty slow, um, but it's huge defensive bulk and uh, pretty good HP growth, which helps mitigate uh, Mozu's problems in that department too, uh, and HP base. Uh, so yeah. you might think of the stint in Merchant as being like, oh, I'm only going in here for um, skills for spendthrift at the end of the game to get the last plus ten damage. But you could go into it like earlier than that, pick up Profiteer, take advantage of that, and be a generally bulkier unit. And Mozu's really fast, so she she solves a lot of the problems that Merchant has as a class. Yeah, I was uh, I was having trouble deciding what class path to send Mozu on. I knew what skills I wanted, but I didn't know what order to acquire them in. And Merchants seem to be really good for her stat layout because she still had enough speed to double as a Merchant and it gave her the option to use Lances. So she even gains a Weapon Triangle control doing it. Like she can use a mini bow or a Lance on Amy phase if she wanted to do one range combat or, you know, do sniper things as a two range unit. So it seemed really versatile and good for her as long as she didn't want to fly. I, didn't, I never bought it with Kinshi in this one in particular. So I was able to use all yeah. the foot class units to my advantage. Yeah. And you, you can make just the, the foot, uh, the foot locked unit, cla uh, foot lock classes work just fine. Uh, I just don't think it's... I, I think to touch the top of her potential, you kind of do need flight to, to be really effective in some of those chapters. Um, That's true. But, yeah, Merchant works surprisingly well, and uh, I'm having a lot of fun with it myself. All right, we'll, uh, we'll throw in the bottom of B now. I think it'll look a bit out of place on the big tier list to have someone like Mozu in the B tier, uh, so maybe some rearrangements will be needed later in that front, but... Mm -hmm. At the same time, like we discussed, in Conquest, anyone can work, and Mozu can definitely work even without spending too much on her. Uh, like, it's just the early game hearts you and a couple turns in her paralogue, and she's contributing at the very least. So, yeah. B or C seems reasonable for her. Uh, anything left on Mozu? Nope, I don't think so. All right. In that case, let's speed round, speed round up to Nyx. Uh, I've never used this unit long term, but I know roughly what she's like. Uh, I. I really prefer Odin, let's put that, put it, uh, put that out first. Nyx seems really fragile with uh, some kind of severe accuracy issues sometimes too. I feel like that's what kind of stops her from being as effective as a Nostradamus tank as Odin is. Uh, for one, not having as much bulk, so she needs the guard gauges sooner, or rather, she dies sooner. And then what you're left with is kind of like a player phase class cannon. I know she's level 9, so what you could do with her is like give her one level in chapter 9 and then promote her with the chapter 10 master seal and have like a Dark Knight running around, for example, with maybe slightly more reasonable bulk. I, I've only saw, seen you do that like once, I don't remember how good it is in the long term. Uh, but I know that any unit who gets the Master Seal around the chapter 10 can reasonably do things for a while in that portion of the game because it's so easy. It feels like a bit of a waste of a Master Seal though, especially because a lot of units that are competent need them, like almost the entire tier list is units that want a Master Seal. Uh, maybe it's even sooner rather than later. So it feels like a bit of a waste to use it like that. I think there's other units here that can do similar things with that too. And in the long term, I don't, there's probably some things Nyx can do. Uh, I've seen funny, uh, what's it called? Shining Bow Adventure Nyx do some funny things. Uh, she just doesn't seem very good to me because the things that she can end up doing, it's just high magic hitting things at range. She, it seems really hard to turn into someone who can do things on any phase. Is my, is my main thing. And then what we're already left with is like hard secret utility. And that's kind of it. But I, I have very little experience with Nyx, so I'll let you I'll let you fill me in with the things that she can do, but she doesn't seem very good. Yeah, I I tend to agree with what you said. Um, and a lot of people look at the situation where she is a level nine unit and she's almost ready to promote. And if you make her a dark knight, she is reasonably competent and, and think that's like pretty impressive and I strongly disagree because as you said basically any unit who promotes at level 10 can one round the enemies and be really effective at combat for the next you know three or four chapters ish basically from chapter 10 to chapter 13 you're gonna be pretty dominant uh just because the enemy stats don't stats don't grow that much and you're a promoted unit now with tons of mobility and extra weapon types and whatever else you got in terms of stats. Um, so you, you can do that. Like you can go Dark Knight Nyx, put Effie on her to solve her defensive issues and go sweep, say, the right side of chapter 10 with all the archers, uh, Setsuna's room in chapter 
uh, 11 with more archers. Chapter 12, you've got uh, a whole bunch of apothecaries that you can fight. And chapter 13, you can kill uh, the knights and wyverns and stuff like that. But I think that's a significantly greater opportunity cost than, say, training Mozu. Um, even though Master Seals are more plentiful, and you don't... In a typical playthrough, you're probably not going to be severely limited um, by the Master Seal availability. You're only a couple before Chapter 13, but you don't really need to promote a lot of people before then. Uh, and then you get, like, I think six or seven more um, from the second shop and over the next few chapters. So you can generally promote whoever you need to. Um, but the problem is, if you promote someone like Nyx early and then feed her a whole bunch of those, uh, those enemies in those early chapters, all you're really achieving is... With, with an unpromoted unit, I would say what you're achieving is you're feeding that unit for their own sake, but with a, an early promoted unit, you're basically just sucking down all that experience. Because um, she'll literally gain one XP per enemy, probably, right? For a for while. For a, a while, yeah. Um, it's the same, she'd be the same level as Camilla, so you don't really gain significant experience from kills until chapter 13. And so then you have to look and say, well, well what am I getting out of this? Uh, maybe I'm getting through the game faster, or like it's helping me beat the challenges. But in practice, not only can you do that with a promoted unit, generally if you understand how to apply your tonics and your stat boost from pair up and things like that, uh, you can accomplish the same tasks combat-wise without promoting. So there are other units who could take on those same jobs and actually get something out of it in the long term, like more stats, more levels. Whereas Nyx really struggles to do that as a base Dark Mage. She's, as you said, she's really frail. Um, she has good magic and good speed. And that's that seems like a recipe for at least a competent unit, but she's also really inaccurate. And because she has very little bulk, she, do, she generally doesn't want to be fighting at one range using Heartseeker, so that doesn't really help as much as you'd want it to. Not as much as like with, with Odin, who can who can afford to sit there and take hits at one range to hit back with Nosferatu. Uh, Nyx is not as well equipped for that. So she really wants to be fighting at range to not take counterattacks, but she's kind of bad at doing that because she's inaccurate. So it's, I just find it's, it's such a struggle to, to use her. You can make it work. She hits the offensive benchmarks pretty easily. It's just everything else about her is... I was about to say, you could probably give her a forged fire and maybe some help with speed to double it early, and then unpromoted things can probably one round for a while, too. It's just yeah, only one enemy per turn, probably. Yeah, hitting the benchmarks to kill things is not Nyx's problem. It's just the entire rest of the package is pretty lackluster. She only has two good stats, really, when you look at it. It's just magic and speed, that's it. Yeah. And you could probably, and... you could probably fix... Uh, like, you could probably make her survive enemies with enough bulk and pair up an investment, but she still has the accuracy problem. And yeah. it's still not good enough bulk to survive more than maybe two enemies. Three, maybe, with card gauge? Yeah, I think that's about right. Um, so, like, yeah, early promotion is a thing. If you only care about getting through the game, it's not really going to punish you for that, because you get enough awesome pre-promotes and other units you can use throughout the run that, like, feeding a bunch of the early experience to a pre-promote who's not going to use it later is... Fine. Um, I just think it's it's pretty lackluster. Like I don't I don't understand what the motivation would be to do that when you have other units who don't need a master seal who can do basically the same jobs um, and actually get something out of it for the long term. Yeah, because the other thing with Nyx, if you promote her early, we, we kind of mentioned this already, but once you've got your ten slash one Nyx and you give her all that experience, she's not going to be good chapter 16, 17 onwards. Like, she no, probably gets outpaced by all the enemies. She, she probably yeah, still, like, like, doubles and kills, maybe, if you want her to, but it's going to be harder. Uh, th even that might be... If you're only, like, 10-2 or 10-3 going into chapter 16 or 17, I uh, I do not... Oh, yeah, I guess in 17, oh. especially in 19, she'll also be have, like, all the problems Leo has, but worse. Yeah. So, like, the best thing she can do in that case is really just be a pair-up bot. Um... Which is fine. A lot of people, I think, several years ago were really hyping up the idea of Adventurer Nyx because uh, she gives a ton of speed then and a little bit of magic from her personal pair of stats and then also res and movement. Uh, 
I actually think Dark Knight Nyx is the better pair up bot because that just gives a mix of magic, speed, defense, and movement, which I think is better than. Sounds like the same thing. <laughs> It, well, yeah, but it, uh, the distribution better. I think is better, and I think the the, de the points in defense are better than what you can get from the extra speed and res from adventure. Yeah, the I main like... person who would like to work with Nyx is Leo, um, because I think we discussed with Leo like he does like a little bit of everything, and Dark Knight Nyx does give him a little bit of everything that he cares about. Yeah, he likes uh, he likes speed and bulk especially, so that makes yeah. sense. Yeah, I I, um, I feel like she's, from what I can tell, she's like Odin's second most magical partner that he wants, besides Elise, which is kind of um, but yeah, I know, that, I know we um, like she, Effie too. She does offer that to Odin as well. Um, it's the same problem with, with both Odin and Leo, though, in that in a lot of cases they really prefer to work with someone who can give them flight, whether that's like by giving them access to Wyvern or just by flying them around. And Nyx categorically cannot do that. <laughs> True. Yes, no access to flying classes at all, other than by marrying. Um, well, that's a lie. If she befriends Moses, she can get Kenshi. But that's <laughs> really inappropriate for for Leo and Odin. Um, so yeah, she can she can give either of them a, a pretty nice pair up bonus in Dark Knight, and they appreciate that. But she's not really their best partner, and. If she was clearly their best partner, I think that'd be that would be worth noting. But I don't think she is, so yeah. it's just kind of meh. And there aren't a lot of other people who really care about uh, a magical pair of partner either. Not a lot of not a lot of men anyway. Mm -hmm. uh, like a, a male Corin maybe, but uh, he has other better pair of bots who give him more. It's really hard so, to be Corin's best partner in anything. Yeah. Right. Um. So. Nix Nix does get uh, friendship with Mozu, which means she, she can get sniper, uh, archer, tree, sniper, Kenshi, um, and do things with bows. You mentioned the shining bow setup. Um, she also can marry Odin to get vantage, life, and death, and that kind of stuff. You can combine those two things and be a really, really fun shining bow build in adventurer or sniper or Kenshi, depending on the situation. Um, and that's all really incredibly entertaining. Um, but it's like the worst possible um, vantage life and death setup in terms of effort you have to put into it. The worst so, possible portraits to put on those skills and classes. Yeah. I bet she would also miss and die a lot if she tried to set up like that. With luck, Lucky 7 and Certain Blow for player phase oh, that's true. access, it's not terrible. Um, and Heartseeker as well. She, she can fix it if you go through the effort to get her through those classes and get those accuracy boosting skills. It's just... It's a lot of work. It's just like one of those units that at one playthrough you decide I'm going to use Nyx today. I'm going to base everything around it rather than I'm going to slide this unit in my team to make it work. Yeah, and you can do that. It's incredibly fun. Um, ask Septi about it sometime. But yeah, yeah, I, I can't really recommend it. I'm glad you mentioned Septi because I think she has a video up where uh, I think Nyx kills Iago with Counter Curse and a lot of other Counter Magic <laughs> shenanigans. Yeah, uh, Counter Curse is really funny because it's it's really bad. Um, but what I can see, it's like enemy hits you with magic, you do like half the damage back, right? That's it. Yeah. Um, it's exactly the same thing as um, counter magic, I think. I'm pretty sure it's the exact same effect. It just stacks with it. Um, maybe it's only half and counter magic is full damage back or something like that. Um, but yeah, it's, it's bad for two reasons. One is it's just hard to make it matter for anything. And the second reason is when it does matter and it actually gets the kill for you, if the killing blow is from counter curse, you don't get experience. Which That's kind of so sad. Funny. Yeah, uh, counter magic is uh, the full damage, whereas counter curse is half the damage. Unfortunately, in yeah. order to get counter magic, you have to go great master or priestess, or yeah, yeah. basically have to get from corn because I think those classes are unavailable from conquest units. Yes, and it would be beyond useless. <laughs> it's it's actively damaging your ability to grow, except as a person. Uh, C tier she goes. Cool. Uh, let's get to some more uh, some more exciting units. I guess. Oh, I mean, all that the stuff is exciting, but like good yeah. units, I guess. It's uh, Selena. Uh, I used Selena for the first time in a different draft in my all games drafts, and I went Wyvern Selena uh, partially because mm -hmm. of your recommendations. I knew that from the start, like the Merc class tree, it seems really good to me skill wise. Like you get a lot of cool skills. Like I think it's called Quick Repost or Stronger Post. Stronger Post. Yes. Yeah. 
And then when you promote it, you can go uh, Hero and get Soul or Bow Knight for like, I think, Rally Skill, Shuriken Breaker. All those are like great options to have in your pool. I don't think the Merc class line itself, as a class to be in, isn't great. I think we discussed that briefly for Silas. It's just, you go through it to get the skills and you get out of there ASAP to do something better. Uh, but the skills themselves are really helpful for Selena as a long term. But fortunately, Especially Selena also... true for the Hero direction. Bow Knight is more legitimate, I think, as its own okay. class. Okay, but... fair enough. Yeah. Fair enough. Uh, I I have also used Bow Knight Selena as like the quick promotion option. I think for my Conquest Lunatic playthrough with Gwimpage, we promoted Selena as soon as she joined, basically, and then used the Bow Knight to kill on, uh, kill Pegasus Knights, which was also pretty helpful. And she still stayed relevant for a long time. We paired her with Xander and just had a good pair of bot going. I think that's one of the better uses of someone you promote early, like we mentioned with Nyx, is you just start killing things as a promoted unit right away, and then when they're no longer useful because the enemies start outgrowing them, you just pair them into someone else that is able, capable of killing them in the long term. Uh, but I feel like the, the best path is still the Wyvern one, where you just get friendship with uh, Baruka or Camilla, and then you do what we discussed for Silas and a lot of our units, basically. You just par a Wyvern with really good stats and um, axes for higher might. I guess it's nice too, although I don't think swords are like terrible in this game, but axes seem better in the long term. And then you fly around and kill stuff, and you have a, the best class for chapters 20 to 23, 24, um, 25 even. I think that's, that's uh, 24. 25 is Hinoka. Uh, 25 is Ryoma. 24 is Hinoka. So mm -hmm. that, that seems like a good class. She also has uh, Falcon Knight, Kinchi Knight by herself, I think. Or I think just Falcon Knight. I don't remember for sure. But uh, yeah, that, that's like so Sky Knight into Falcon and Kenji. Yep. Oh yeah, yeah, that's what that's how, that's how it goes. Uh, I've never tried those. It seems all right. There you have like I think you got rally speed that way. Uh, I feel like the Wyvern is better if you just want to fight with Selina herself. But I guess those are nice support options. So she seems kind of good. Her stats seem able to do things the way you want them to. Her set line overall looks like within reach of benchmark. She probably needs some help getting there, but she just seems competent to me. And that's all uh, I got. Yeah. <laughs> I, I like Selena a lot. I feel like the more I use her, the more I like her. Um, because, she, like, circumstances are just so kind to her um, in terms of, like, what, what she can be used for early and then how she transitions into other roles later in the game. Um, and the roles she does take on as you either, like, train her up or promote her and then use her for utility are, are both really, really good. Um yeah, so joining alongside her her two uh, companions in Baruka and Camilla, um, both of whom really appreciate her speed bonus, um, is a huge boon for her. Uh, because she, like, even if you're not really trying, she's useful to have. Um, like, pair her into Baruka, and Baruka hits important benchmarks. Pair Baruka into Selena, and Selena hits important benchmarks. Um, Selena can give. Camilla, a big speed bonus that she really likes to have for the next few chapters. She gives four on base. That's insane. And then defense as with, well. Uh, with a C support, she gives four. Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, true. Yeah. Which you can accomplish C support with both Camilla and Baruka in chapter 10 if you want. Um, yeah, fast supporting both of them is really nice. Uh, yeah, so four speed at base. Uh, it continues to be four speed, or four speed at base with a C support, rather. Um, and then she continues to give that speed bonus if you promote to Bow Knight. So you can go with the early promotion there. And I think it's it's important to consider how early promoting Selena is way better than doing the same thing for someone like Nyx. Because as you said, you do the same sorts of things where you take your early promoted unit and they can help you out killing some of the tougher enemies. Um, but Selena's parrot bonuses are way more applicable to your top-end combat units in that period, like Camilla. Uh, giving Camilla plus four speed and plus one movement is pretty huge, especially if you're going for uh, for turn saves in places like Chapter 11. And it's just extremely effective. And what's great about going with Bow Knight on Selena is she actually does have legitimately good stats that hold up for a while. Um, so you can use her in that early period for the next few chapters in Bow Knight and then still hit the benchmarks to kill things in, for example, chapter 17. Like base 10-1, Bow Knight, Selena, with Keaton pair up and some, some other stat boosts involved, can hit the thresholds to one round the Master Ninjas in that map with oh, wow. a bow. So that's really good. That means you didn't really have to give her anything. You just walk in, 
to chapter 17 with a promoted unit and she just takes care of it. Yeah, that, there's also just decent XP gain for her at that point, probably, if she is 10. Yeah, she'll, she will level up pretty fast at that point. Um, so, yeah, it, it works out great. Um, and then she does continue to have real utility beyond that because she gets Rally Skill, which is... Um, I think people underrate just how useful and important that can be for your... Uh, to make things go smoothly for the rest of the run. You, plus six hit is really helpful. Um, especially in places like Kitsune Lair. And she she continues to give that important like speed and uh, movement para bonus that some of her, her friends and partners really, really like to have. So she has places where she has legitimate combat purposes even much later in the game than when you promoted her. And she has utility supporting the team in general with rallies. Uh, you can go into... Uh, as you mentioned, Falcon Knight at, at some point to get Rally Speed if you like. Um, it's going to be a little bit awkward to get those levels, just because being essentially Lance Locked is not the greatest. But you can you can make that happen. Is healing too slow with that? Because Falcon Knight's got the staff. Oh right? yeah, healing will be miserable. Yeah. You have no staff rank, and you get like between one and five experience per heal. Oh, that's gross. Yeah, I remember trying to train Jacob and Felicia for some skills with staffs. It was miserable too. But they were way higher level, so I was hoping Selena would be better off. Yeah, it, it's grinding with with healing is not the way to go in this game. It just it really doesn't work. All right, we'll just stick with some uh, some dual uh, strikes then. Yeah, but you can do that. You can also then go into Wyvern Lord and get Rally Defense if you like. Um, so you you can Selena beca can become a very competent Rally bot who flies, which is nice. It's something you don't get really from catchable Rally bots, uh, and you you can. Put all that together a lot earlier too um so yeah she just has fantastic utility if you go that route and then if you do go with the wyvern path she has very easy access to it because of her fast friendships and she if you work on those support ranks with baruka or camilla every chapter um after selena joins then she finishes and gets a rank with one of them right at at the end of chapter 13 which is exactly when the second shop opens and you get more friendship seals and now you've got this unit who really wants to use one. And I, it just... I was just going to say, I managed to get it at chapter 12 in my draft route, which was not very efficient, but I did very diligent work on the support ranks in the meanwhile. And the, most, a lot of the enemies just didn't damage her in chapter 12. It's quite hilarious. Yeah. Uh, did you save, like, uh, Invasion 1 and Paralog 1 or something like that? Or yeah, that's what I did. That's right. that's yeah. right. Yeah. So you can make that happen, too. Um, and you don't often need to use a friendship the, the one friendship seal from the first shop so if you do something like that yeah you can get her into wyvern even earlier in the campaign very yeah. cool i think that's something we haven't really brought up with regards to uh, invasion one especially paralog one is you can just use them as opportunities to get more support points because you physically can't get more support points per chapter sometimes but you can just mm -hmm. put those chapters in between to do something like uh septi did it for the hold camilla forward thing where to get camilla made um, yeah, I, I did it for a wife and Selena example there. So, I guess that's maybe one opportunity cost for Mozu um, use is that you can't really save a paralog for support grinding if you have to focus on getting Mozu and making Mozu competent. It's only minor. Yeah, that, it doesn't really change anything. That's that is that is true. Um, I, I think for general gameplay, I wouldn't recommend saving those maps beyond. Like, I, I'd want to do them both before chapter ten. So I think that's when they can be most helpful. But if you have something specific in mind where you need a later joining unit to get some support points quickly, then yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Save them and, and use them for that purpose. Yeah, it, it's yeah. probably good to mention that for all these units because uh, the, a lot of the units we discussed in previous episodes joined like chapter 7, 6, or even earlier. And so they were able to grind like at least the C support very early and the B support, maybe some progress on that too. But these units joined like chapter 10 plus, except for Mozu mm -hmm. or Nixus 9, I guess. So they have a lot more trouble getting early supports than the other ones. Yeah, it's it, it takes quite a bit more work, and it, it tends to like that that process tends to go on until the the, the middle game you know, time when when enemies start promoting and things start being more difficult. So that is worth considering. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, Wy Wyvern Rider Selena is, I think, an incredible unit. Uh, she's still not going to be as good as Camilla, but who can be? Um, but she's she's fast. She's really bulky because Selena has high natural um, defenses, or at least physical defense, um, and Wyvern accentuates that with the same growth as Knight. And Selena's core problem usually is that 
her strength isn't that impressive. Uh, with Bow Knight, uh, the fact that bows have really good might helps. Uh, with Wyvern, you're, you're importing stronger posts from your mercenary class, and you get strength plus two really quickly. So she never really has problems with uh, offensive output either. She's fast, she has skills that make her strength pretty good, and she flies, and she has high defense. Like, what not, what's not to like? Yeah. Her skill stat isn't, like, the most impressive, but it works. I think, depending on when you put her into Wyvern, it may actually make sense to to switch over to training Lances, and just for the extra accuracy on that, um, in a lot of cases, once you promote, but... Uh, and she won't have a ton of Axe rank the way someone like Ruka or Camilla has. So... That's sort of interesting texture to her. I don't think it really like affects anything, no. No, I suppose not. I was thinking if you train her Lance rank a bit, you also just get a Beast Killer user for chapter 19 yeah. that can mm -hmm. survive hits. She's not like tank. She's not like super tanky like Xander is, but she could probably still fight a group with some uh, yeah. some help. I if I were looking for for a Beast Killer Wyvern, well, I, I think Xander is probably the number one choice. But for a secondary one, I would rather make Selena do it than Camilla example because I, I like keeping Camilla in in Malig and just going straight to trample I think that just if it, like in terms of resource efficiency that just works really well yeah that's true I remember with Camilla it's a little bit awkward to have to switch between them because I do want to be the Lord at some point I think to get slightly higher defenses I think it's what that class mm -hmm. gets uh like and, for for general combat it's nice um unless yeah, you're doing it's, spirit it's dust better round, strength skill speed and and defense it's like just worse magic and res mm -hmm. um and that like making Camilla a Wyvern Lord is helpful on I think the LTC uh, to hit benchmarks, but aside from that, I don't think it's really that important. You're mostly just using your axes. You've got the dual club. I I prefer having the option to use tomes than picking up lances. Um, so if I'm not super worried about hitting specific stat benchmarks, which Camilla won't really struggle to hit anyway in a less than uh, less than maximum pace playthrough, uh, I don't think there's a lot of value in that. Yeah, but for Selena, who has no reason to use tomes ever, she probably only wants to like she probably just wants to go by from door right away just to keep her stats as relevant as possible, and then yeah. maybe if you can afford like the two seals, go back and forth in Malik to get trample, maybe. Yeah, and that may or may not even be necessary in the late game. You you like Wyvern Lord uh, Selena is going to be really effective throughout the rest of the game. Uh. I don't think Trample is actually all that necessary for what she does um, as you get into the later parts of the game. Like even Hinoka's chapter, you don't, Trample doesn't work on the enemy flyers for one thing. Um, and then in other places, she's probably better off supporting um, other people. So, um, yeah, but anyway, uh, Wyvern Lord Selena, very, very good. If you train her up and promote it like level 17 or 19 uh she becomes <laughs> the really funny point of comparison is she like almost exactly mimics camilla's stat line at base um oh, but base? unfortunately <laughs> yeah <laughs> which is like it sounds sounds like a, a bad thing because like wow you put all this effort into someone and you made them just as good as another character who like started at that level when the same character joined yeah uh but having a second person with that stat line is still really good um it's unfortunate that Selena doesn't get the boost experience that Camilla does, but you know, leaving that aside, she's pretty awesome. Yeah, it, she reminds me a little bit of Kaze, the way we're describing her, because the the amount of reclassing she has to do is very minimal, but the output is absolutely great. Like, she supports one guy and gets a really good class out of it, and it just kills everything. But with mm -hmm. less like slightly less availability and maybe some slight issues, like you mentioned her strength being as like a slight maybe problem, it might not make it to S tier though, right? Like I feel like it's more of an A tier kind of unit. I I, I wouldn't say S tier. Yeah. You said slight less availability, and I was like, wait a second, Kaze joins after Selena. But I guess technically he does have more availability if you count the. the oh, if I the, said Kaze, I meant the, Silas probably. Okay. <laughs> but I, I, with Kaze, it's like yeah, if you uh, if you count the prologue chapters, then I guess he does have more availability. Nah, nah, Kaze is cringe, man. Can't even two with kill anything. He's just a he's a niche guy. Yeah. He's a. He's a specialist. Yeah. <laughs> Silas is a generalist. Um, yeah, I think in terms of placement, I would put Selena in the same neighborhood as like Odin and Leo. It, it, it takes some input, but what you get out of it is is really impressive. And Selena does have 
two very divergent pathways to go down. Um, kind of like how Odin and Leo have the thing where they can do like general combat stuff and be really good at that, or they can go with the, the super specialized vantage thing. Um, and Selena has that, that kind of thing going on too, where you, depending on what you want out of her and how she fits into your team, you can make her a great support unit, you can her, make her a great combat unit. You do have to sort of decide pretty quickly what you want to do, but she works really well. Yeah, so I guess a little Leo for now is fine. Like definitely better than Kaze, Imo, but uh, pretty good. Fair enough. Sure. Right, um, Baruka. I was I was really down on Baruka when I was before my Soyo playthrough because she just seemed very unimpressive to me. And right now I've been using her again, and I was actually really impressed with what she did between her joining chapter and chapter, I want to say 13 or 14 or so. I thought she was RNG blessed, but the way she was like killing almost everything that I put her up against with some help from tonics and pairups, of course. But uh, she was like she had like Camilla level stats, and she wasn't even RNG blessed, so. I was a little bit hyped on her, and as I got later into the game, I was again a little down. Uh, like, she, her speed seems to be one of the few ones in this game with no reclassing help that you need like to put everything into to even remotely fix it. It's so freaking trash. Uh, but for the chapters after she joins, it's sufficient to get the doubling speeds. And when you have a wyvern that doubles, I mean, what more do you possibly need? Right, that class is the best in the game for a reason. And she, she was she was fine up to that point. It's like the, the main purpose of using Baruka seems to be just to give other people wyvern rather than having most kind of utility herself. Like she just flies people to places, maybe launches some someone. But it's I find it really hard to get her working in general one to one combat. Like turning her into a carry seems like a miserable place to be. But it, you probably have to start with fixing her speed up, and then she can maybe do something. But other than that. I don't know. It, all I can see from her besides like Wyvern options that she can go fight her, but Wyvern just seems better, so I don't even want to reclass her. Her starting class seems like the best thing about her. So I would say she falls kind of in the same way as uh, as Arthur, where there's like a couple supportive things about her that are really good, but getting anything else out of her seems like more work than it's worth. But I do appreciate her for the chapters that she's around for for the first couple maps or so, just for being an option that's probably better than untrained units at the very least. I think she's she's like fine, but that, that speed is so awful. Like, am I wrong? Is her speed not like is her speed as bad as I'm thinking it is? It's pretty bad. Um, it's definitely not Benny territory. Uh, you you can get her to the point where she's doubling stuff, and it's not too far out of reach. But um, yeah, it's it's a significant limitation. <laughs> um, and yeah, part of her problem is. Like, she really, really wants speed, and there aren't, like, not just a little bit of speed, not like, give me a fighter pair up speed. It's like, I need really dedicated speed support. And I need Zora to marry right now to get rally speed. <laughs> and the uh, the classes that just, like, can give her a bunch of speed don't really help her with other issues she has. Like, her strength is not very good. Um, so congratulations to Intelligent Systems on making an actually balanced Wyvern Rider. Yeah. <laughs> um, they did it. Hooray. Uh, it's just too bad uh, <laughs> she exists in a game where she actually joins with another Wyvern Rider who has way better stats and grows faster in the long term and just is just <laughs> way more impressive in every way. I mean, you just described the entirety of SNA tier. I feel like almost everyone here can become a Wyvern and become better than Baruka. It feels yeah. Like. It's true. Um, so yeah, Baruka's. I I think, I think you th hit the nail on her head, like on the on the head, um, <laughs> like her, on her head. <laughs> the um, uh, the main utility she really has is being a flying unit, with you know every advantage that Wyvern Riders have, like good pair up bonuses and um, just generally decent matchups, um, for the next several chapters and everything. But it's really hard to make Baruka stand out. Um, even in her wyvern writing role, she gets usurped by people like uh, Elise and Selena pretty quickly. So, um, yeah, she's she's one of those characters like Arthur, where it's like on her own, for her own sake, she's not that impressive. But for what she can bring to the team, I think she's pretty good anyway. Um, and worth deploying a lot of the time. So it, it just works out that it's helpful to have Baruka on the team in a lot of the next several chapters, and she does contribute. She just doesn't really contribute as a 
primary combat unit for very long. No, I, I guess what I neglected to mention is she is one of the better early people to just pair into someone, or rather, turn one, they pair into her, she flies like seven, eight tiles away, and then they fight, and then she gives plus three strength, plus three defense, or something like that. That's pretty good. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's very good. So someone like Kaze, for example, um, doesn't care about fighter pair bonuses because he doesn't really care about the speed, but he does love having speed or strength and defense and eventually movement with a promotion. So that's pretty cool. It's, it's nice to have. Um, in my in my train everyone challenge, I made her a, a malignite. I was gonna and ask actually, about that. <laughs> I've actually sort of grown to love that. Like, it's not good, really, objectively. But for my purposes, it's been amazing. So why would um, you do that then? Uh, partly it's because I wanted her to be able to chip things um, badly with tomes <laughs> um, for, for extra support ranks. But I was like, okay, well, this is just kind of a gimmick to make the support routing easier and, and like have her promote early and like help out with extra movement and not steal kills. But in that way, she's actually been really helpful. So I, I, I'm, I'm fond of it. I, I don't think it's good, but it's like, you know, Baruka's kind of been a champion. <laughs> um, and uh, getting things like Savage Blow has been surprisingly helpful. That is so, so weird. Because I, I thought yeah. you'd be able to do that with just like Hand Axe Wyvern Lord at the very least, right? Because she still has Opportunist. And she's not doubling anyway, right? Um, yes. You, you mostly can. Um, it's just a couple specific matchups where it was nicer to have Malig for various reasons. Um, yeah, it's... That does seriously gimp her ability to be an effective para partner for a lot of people, but it does make her better for Leo. So if you're, if you're looking for Wyvern Leo, hey, Malignite uh, Baruka. Oh, maybe I should just buy a seal and do that just to give him a little bit more. Although I have been doing Leo Corn because my, my Corn is a Dark Knight now. That kind of works out for Leo. I don't really have any use for Malig Baruka there. But I think I think you're right about the placement. Like I, I would put her under Arthur here. Mm -hmm. um, like Arthur's pair up utility is more generally applicable. And I think more important to the team overall, but Baruch is great at doing what she does, and like a lot of that is just flying someone to a place on turn one and then switching and being a good pair up bot. But that's a pretty good job. Yeah, she's nice to have, and it takes a long while before you get units that you'd rather deploy over Baruka. And when you do, mm -hmm. that's fine. She's done her job. She still saw uh, maybe like six, seven, eight, nine, ten maps of reasonable utility, depending on what you do. And maybe in some spaces, there's still a place for her um, when you don't need a whole lot of combat units, but you don't want to fly around. Could happen she just happens to be a good deploy hmm. all right all right we're done with Bruka. yep okay in that case uh lazlo i have very little experience like using lazlo as a combat unit i've never trained him in my life i just click the rally button to get plus one strength and speed on my units and call the day and uh that, that that on its own feels like b tier already because it's just so nice to have if theoretically lazlo just had one more strength and speed than than, than most other units I wouldn't really count it against him, but the fact that he can't use his own rally, like you mentioned at one point, is pretty fucking funny. Um, yeah. He has the same class as uh, Selena in Merc, so like I said before, the skill set is pretty good, so if you wanted to turn him into a combat unit, it probably could. It kind of irks me that his stat distribution isn't very different from Selena, but he feels like it joins an Eternity later, even though it's only two maps, really. Uh, but it feels like the circumstances got get worse for Merc as you go on through the game, and so he really wants a, a quick reclass to get good it feels like i'm not sure what his prospects are like um it probably changes because he's a dude rather than a girl so that probably changes things a little bit but for the most part it's it's hard to find a reason for me to want to use this unit over just having him be a rally bot but i know he can get like almost every rally in the game through proper reclassing so that's kind of nice i haven't really found it very difficult to get the rallies like i mentioned with niles sure you can capture rally bots or you can uh capture rally man specifically but generally, you kind of end up with a spread of different classes anyway, and so you end up obtaining most of the rallies. Most of the kids are good rally bots. So I'm not sure how to value that uh, as a thing you can do, but I guess he's just another person who can do it. I'm just curious what Lazlo is like as a combat unit mostly and where that leaves him. Okay. Uh, as a combat unit, uh, Lazlo's... You, you, you would kind of think he has a lot of parallels with Selena. Um, being another mercenary, also be having the option to go hero or bow knight. Um, and if you look at their initial stat spreads, Laszlo is the stronger and I guess theoretically bulkier one because he has more HP. 
uh, and more skill as well, whereas Lena is the fast one with more defense. Um, I think in practice, Laszlo is really hurt by the fact that he can't get his own rally in that context, though. <laughs> uh, so, and, and having lower speed to start with is also a bit of a problem because you can early promote Laszlo and he can do the same, he can do a similar kind of thing to Selena where uh, he's, he goes into Bow Knight, he does Bow Knight combat and they're, they're good applications for that. Like, um, he can take the Armor Slayer out of chapter 12 and go to chapter 13 and beat knights there and also shoot down wyverns. Uh, chapter 14, he can shoot the, uh, the, the Sky Knights and Kenshi Knights and also uh, fight the Oni Savages with his swords. Um, chapter 16, he's not the greatest, similar to Selena in that respect. But then you get to chapter 17, and I highlighted earlier that Selena can do, uh, can, can kill the Master Ninjas at base with some support. Um, a key component of that is getting Lazlo's rally. <laughs> So it's not even a, a two-speed lead that Selena has. It's actually three-speed over him, which is really crucial for hitting the speed benchmarks there. Yeah, but it's really hard to so, cut it against Lazlo because he's giving that bonus. Yeah, like is still important for that, but like as the the bow knight who's doing the combat, Lazlo is markedly worse. Yes. Um. So, and and Selena, to be fair, could also just gain one speed by doing other combat in earlier chapters. So it's not like you need Lazlo to hit that benchmark, but if you if you get levels up speed from other sources, then that makes it, you know, maybe fewer tonics you have to buy, or um, maybe she doesn't need to take the the premium plus speed pair of people like <laughs> Wolf Segner, um, Keaton, that kind of stuff. Um, but Lazo can be made to work. There are some pretty impressive things that he can do starting out in Bow Knight. I think Lag Spike has a setup that he likes um, for killing Takami's group on like the first couple turns of chapter 13 with Laszlo as a bow knight. Um, so I, I wouldn't discount that. He's, he's pretty solid at it. And he has a lot of the same rally utility as, as Selena does with the extra flavor of having his own personal rally that you can't replicate from anywhere else. That's a unique rally source. There's no other way to replace that. It just stacks on every other type, kind of rally. And because plus one strength and plus one speed is pretty useful for a lot of benchmarks. There are a lot of places in the game where you just want to deploy Laszlo, even if it's just for like a single rally on turn one. Like a lot of times that's worth having more than your 14th best unit or whatever it is. Yeah, that probably um, depends largely on how many combat units you've trained, how many you're trying to train into the late game. Usually Fire Emblem is easier when you deploy fewer units. And so mm -hmm. the more you do that, the more Laszlo is good. Or the better, or the easier it becomes to fit Laszlo on a on a squad like that. Yeah. So I mean, you could legitimately just have level twelve Laszlo in mercenary running around for the entire game and still make reasonable use out of him for his rally alone. Yeah, I mean, if that's um, what it takes to kill Takumi, like just giving that plus one strength any day. It's pretty yeah. Good. Uh, I I think if you're going to do that, you might as well just have him actually do other stuff and promote him and get rally skill and and stuff like that. But you know, if that's all you want out of him. Sometimes that's worth it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, the lowest of hanging fruits. I was looking at uh, Veil vale for a little bit because I forgot to look at the one thing, which is that Kaze, Laszlo just has Ninja in his base class set, but he doesn't seem mm -hmm. to compare it particularly favorably to like Kaze at level 14, for example. And then he has to deal with E Shuriken, so he doesn't have to steal Shuriken like he does. So that doesn't seem like yeah. a great option, but it's still a good class. Yeah, he, he does get Ninja, and on paper that seems pretty awesome. He even gets to bring in Strong Repost which does help make up for the difference with the, the weapon ranks. Uh, like it makes his his own uh, bronze dagger like reasonably okay. Uh, but I, I think if you, for the specific things that Kaze does, Lazo is going to be worse, like fighting mages and stuff. Um, and Kaze was free. And if you're looking for the whole soul master ninja thing, like yes, Lazlo has that in his base kit. You don't have to build support ranks or anything for that. Um, but he's really not very good at it relative to some of the other options um, that you that you have. Like Silas being the most notable, but also Lazo's own daughter is a lot better at that job than he is because of the way their, their stat distributions work out. And, and Soleil having a much better personal skill to use in that role. So, uh, yeah, you can make it work, but Lazlo's... Lazo's HP is, I guess, pretty good, but his physical defense is not that great, and neither is his res. So, 
for for a role like Soul Master Ninja, you really want to have really good concrete defenses, if at all possible. And Lazo doesn't really bring that, so he's going to take a lot more you know, support, a lot more investment into bulk to succeed at that than other yeah. people do. I was looking at his concrete durability and like level twelve, like base reclass Lazo as a ninja has roughly the same physical bulk as Kaze. The difference is like Lazo has two more HP and have the same defense. It's pretty yeah. bad. And, and Kaze is actually likely to be much higher in level at that point. Um, if you if you had him uh, kill stuff in chapter four and especially chapter five. Yeah, I gave him five levels. I don't remember how much he usually gets, but sure, he could be higher. I think I, got, right. I probably had a so, 15 or 16 at some point. Yeah, so if you don't train him at all, I believe Kaze starts at level nine. Yes. Plus six levels from base or something. Yeah, he gets three levels, right? When you, when you get yeah. back. Yeah, he, he, he gets... Six, he, his levels up goes up by six, and then he actually gets. I think they're custom auto levels that like they're not based on his growth rates. So it's just a fixed stat. Oh, um, change. That's odd. I wonder if Vale knows yeah. that when you're checking your stats. Probably not because you can't. Like, you can't. I think because it has different definition for conquest Kaze with different bases. I oh, I see. I just look at if Kaze, so maybe it doesn't factor that in because Kaze is in like all routes. So I guess it's kind of tough. Well, either way, it, it yeah. probably doesn't but, change. Yeah, too regardless. Much. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, he's going to be worse than... If you just make him a ninja instantly, he's probably going to be worse than Kaze. Um, which is not a, a ringing endorsement of yeah. any ninja, really. Um, so for me, I think, if we're talking placement, uh, it's right in the neighborhood of Arthur and Baruka. Mm -hmm. like, there's, a, there's a key support role that Laszlo plays. Oftentimes, he's worth having in one of your last few deployment slots. Um, he can, similar to Selena, he can go for a, a multiple rallies. Uh, he only actually has a rally skill in his base class set, but he can get uh, he can actually get rally speed from Selena, which is cool. Um, he can get rally defense if he marries one of the the wyvern riders, which is one of the ways where he's uh, like if you were just looking at male um, male mercenary versus female mercenary gener generically in this game, you might think, oh, okay, well, male mercenary can marry Camilla or Baruka and get wyvern. That's pretty cool, but. Selena has those friendships and gets them faster, so she's actually even better at that. Um, a, a lot of the women in, the, in this cast would would dearly love to be able to get Wyvern and they just can't. Like Effie, for example. But uh, Selena can, so she's she uh, she has that the same advantage that a lot of the men have, and she does it even better. Um, and Lazo so just like he, joins a lot later again. I mean, I, yeah, it's only two yeah, chapters, but it still feels like an attorney, like I said. Two chap, two chapters later, and he doesn't have fast supports with people who give him mm -hmm. useful classes, really. So, um, yeah, he he misses out on that. So yeah, he's he has good utility. Um, he can get a collection of useful rallies. Um, if he goes for either Wyvern or Sky Knight, he can fly. He does get replicate, which is kind of funny to have on a rally bot. Uh, <laughs> That's true. Uh, not what really I, worth going for, but it's a yeah. thing. What I found really helpful with replicate is being able to rally to someone while they're like up across the map doing something else. That was like the main thing I found was very helpful. Yeah, I think for replicate rally strats, it's it's sort of I, neither way is it really efficient, but I think or really important to do this. But I think you're right. I think it's more impressive to have replicate on the person who gets the rally because you can rep you can rally for them and heal them from behind the lines without having your support people anywhere near the action um, which is cooler than having multiple copies of your support people running around near the front lines yeah because they don't stack with each other and if they're going to be combat units then they're just going to take a lot more damage if they're fighting two armies at once yeah so uh but yeah that's like a that's like a, a sidetrack i guess so i, I agree with uh putting them roughly around where <clears throat> Arthur and Bruca are, I find it really hard to evaluate the plus one plus one that he gives, which is like the, the low hanging fruit from what he can do and then with investments. Mm -hmm. I, I've never tried. So I was thinking between Baruka and Effie. I don't know what you feel about that. Yeah, I think that's fair. I a lot of there's a lot of places on this list where you know you could quibble and say, well maybe Lazo deserves to be ahead of Baruka or something. Mm -hmm. But it's kind of splitting hairs. Yeah. True. Um, I just I just wanted to make sure the general direction was fine. Yeah. Right. Uh, I guess, yeah, he does also get Rally Strength from Keaton, so that's a cool bonus. Oh, um, true, as well. Yeah. All right, Perry then? Yeah, let's go for it. All right. Uh, another unit I've never trained, so I had to mostly look at theory for this one. I 
do think Perry's base utility is pretty good for you. You put nothing in again, like just having shelter on a cab is pretty nice, especially uh, someone like Silas is probably not going to be sheltering a lot if he's killing everything in sight. And so having an extra shelter bot is always just good to have. Uh, I like her personal skill, the, the bloodthirst thing. I feel like it would be a little bit tough to utilize. I tried doing it a couple times myself because uh, it feels like you just kind of have to dedicate Azura to making great use of it because if you're killing one enemy and then you only get the bonus for enemy phase and at least base parry is not the best enemy phase combat unit ever so you probably want to dance to her and kill something again but like just getting plus four strength and speed alone is great and then also I think skill and luck is what she gets and that's that's pretty awesome to just get for something you want to do anyway which is killing enemies and then Cavalier's strength, good clap. magic, skill, and speed All oh not, not luck alright sorry got yep. that wrong um, I don't know if the speed is really worth a whole lot because I feel like if you're dedicating Zerzor to someone and she has Inspiring Song already, then you're giving plus three already, so it might be a little bit overkill. But at the same time, Perry's bases don't seem too great. They are very borderline on even being good. Like, I don't know how to describe this except that she just needs a lot of help in the stats to one round kill things at base. And then we discussed before how Cavalier is a great class to be in, but Paladin does not feel so great, so... I feel like she needs some kind of reclassing help to stay competent for the whole game. And I don't know how viable that is. You can probably make Bloodthirst work and kill things on enemy phase with her reasonably competently. Uh, but the Cavalier Tree doesn't seem like the best place for her to do that, right? Yeah, absolutely not. Yeah, um, that, that's all I know about Perry. I'm done. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Perry's story is so sad in this game because... If Javelins just worked the way they did in previous games, I think she would be a contender for, like, maybe S tier, honestly. Because, <laughs> uh, like, if Bloodthirst... If she could trigger Bloodthirst and then get plus four to all her offensive stats and double stuff with Javelins and, like, just have an incredible enemy phase in her base class, then that would just be so, so good. <laughs> like, just thinking about it, it's like, wow, that seems incredible. But Cavalier, and as, as you said, especially as you transition into promoting into Paladin or Great Knight, it's just having no real doubling 1-2 range options is so limiting for anyone's combat capabilities, but especially parries. Um, she's pretty fast for a Cavalier and actually pretty strong at base relative to her level, um, being only level 10. Um, and... She's the resistance-focused Cavalier, so she doesn't have the great, for whatever that's worth, which isn't much. Um, she doesn't have the greatest uh, physical defense. But, like, if, if you could just double with Javelins, she'd be, like, a second Kaze, basically. But probably better for more, more mobility and better skills and stuff. Uh, but you can't. And... It's a real struggle to make her effective, just in general terms. Uh, as you said, like because she doesn't really have good enemy phase options with swords or lances, if you're trying to make use of her personal skill, you really kind of do need to have Azura rally for her and like have her go kill something else on player phase. Um, there are certainly places where you can go uh, pick up a kill and then sit there and fight samurai or spear fighters or whatever, but those opportunities run out really fast uh, in this game. And... There are things that like look great on paper, like the, the shelter utility, for example. Like, she's going to be your, your second cavalier, usually, and having a second shelter is pretty cool. Um, but that utility also runs out really fast, because in a, just a few chapters, you're going to get Gunter, you're going to get Xander, and you've got, you know, between Silas and, and those two, you've got people who are better at combat and are probably more worth deploying, who also have shelter and can be used in those like quick uh, shelter singing setups if you if you need them. And the utility of shelter for that purpose or just in general really falls off after you have more than two or three copies of it. Like yes, you can engineer like really complicated shelter singing chains where you need more copies of shelter available, but those those opportunities are just really few and far between and probably you're better off doing something else than spending half your army's turns sheltering and taking and switching and singing again. The question, do you think there's value in having shelter on a unit that doesn't need to do combat so that your, some, your Silas or Xander is able to do more 
combat related things or can usually make your shelter user also get into combat very easily? I think it's the latter. Um, just because the other units who get shelter are really good and worth using and you don't always need them to be in combat every turn. Especially turn one. Like a lot of times they're sheltering for themselves so that they, <laughs> Azura can sing to them after. <laughs> you move someone else, then you shelter with Xander or, or Silas or someone. And then you pull Azura and have them sing to Xander and Xander rides off or flies off and does his thing. Yeah, the position works. You just out don't that need way. Yeah, you just don't need a lot more than that. Um like you you could find cases where Perry's fighting for one of those last deployment slots because yeah, she's got shelter. Um but I think in practice it's just not as impactful as you you'd want it to be. Like mm -hmm. it matters potentially in chapter twelve and chapter thirteen and chapter fourteen. But as soon as you get to Xander's recruitment, it's like, well, now I've got my fourth best shelter unit. And is that really worth deploying? Is that really going to make a difference for me? Or am I better off having, you know, different pair up bots or someone with rallies or things like that? Lock touch, Niles or captures. A lot of other people are fighting for those last deployment slots at that point. Yeah. Well, they have to be tier as well, like pair up bots and stuff like that. Um, and then. Perry's other big problem is it's a real struggle for her to get out of Cavalier. Uh, she doesn't... Her heart seal class is Dark dark Mage, which is pretty bad for her. Hey, you want it once um, in range. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> you can make it work, I'm sure, if you give her a sorcerer pair-up partner and and dump some spirit dust into her and everything, but just... It, it's like worse Leo. Um, Much worse Leo. Uh, I guess life, life taker seems like a funny gimmick, but that's way late in the game, and it's like you look at the synergy. Like you look at the synergy with personal skill and say, "Ooh, she heals herself and rallies all her stats." But um, synergy is not the same thing as being actually good. Yeah, no. I mean, life taker is just good even when you don't have that personal skill. It's just a good skill to have. But yeah, shooting for it like that—that's kind of difficult. Yeah. Um, and her marriage options aren't great either, because I mean. Unlike Selena, she doesn't have the benefit of having friendship with uh, any Wyvern writers. Um, she does get, she can marry Xander and get Wyvern that way, which is cool. Um, but like that's like the only notable class she gets out of marriage. She could marry Kaze for uh, for Ninja, but she's in the same boat as Lazo, where she's just not bulky enough to make that really work. And um, her friendships, what she does have is. This is probably your, legitimately your best option. She does have friendship with uh, with Selena, so she can get Bow Knight, but that basically just makes her a, a, like what she's trying to do with that is become Selena. <laughs> like she she's trying to get friendship with Selena so she can reclass to Bow Knight, so she can do what Selena does in Chapter Seventeen, and that's like the most notable thing she can achieve. Yeah, it still doesn't give her like a great enemy phase, does it? It's just not really. Yeah, I was um, thinking you could maybe. I was thinking for Laszlo as a partner, because she probably has a fast support with Laszlo, right? Because they're both the retainer for Xander. Uh, she does, actually. That's still slower than friendship with Selena, but yes. Oh, okay. Because um, it takes six maps to get married with a fast support. Oh, and that's five true. maps to get friendship with uh, same sex. All right, I'm a little embarrassed to admit this, like after six hours of Conquest tier listing, but I just realized why partners is, like, or like uh, friendship is way faster than marriage. It's an extra support level. <laughs> <laughs> yep. I, I was like wondering why people short. preferred that. I thought it was something to do with the yep. seals. I didn't realize, oh, A, A plus is way faster than S. All right. Yep. I think one of the... This isn't really killer to Perry's viability, but it, it feels really bad. The fact that her personal skill is actually just rally strength skills, or strength magic skill and speed. Like, it's it's literally that. Like, it's, it's not like a, a, a variant... Like the way that Lazo's rally is a is a special unique thing. It is act the actual effect of Bloodthirst is it gives you rally strength. Oh, it doesn't stack with you rally her as well. Correct. Oh no. So if, if you've got those rallies from other sources, then Perry's personal skill does nothing. I didn't know that. That's awful. Why did they do that? I don't know. It feels terrible. This, this game lets you stat stack everything except Perry's personal skill. Yes. Um. Yeah. So Perry's personal skill works that way. Um, there are a couple of, I think, Hoshidan kids who have personal skills that rally themselves, and those also have that same limitation. Um, but those, those are way less relevant 
for a normal playthrough in Birthright. Um, but yeah, like, <laughs> if, you've, if you're getting later in the game and you've got those rallies online, then Perry's personal skill is basically negated, and then you're just running off being a fairly fast, fairly strong unit who started in Cavalier, so has elbow room and shelter, um, but really struggles to have a good class to work with for the rest of the game. So, yeah, the, I think the, the, the changes to the way combat works, and especially with the 1-2 the range melee weapons in Fates, are just really sad for Perry, because if, if it weren't for that, I think she'd be amazing. But because Javelins aren't good, and the Kodachi isn't good, um, it, she just really struggles. She doesn't have the magic to do something like Leaven Sword or whatever. Oh, that's so sad. Yeah, not really. Uh, again, you, you could dump every magic booster in the game on her and like make that happen, but just... It, <laughs> it's not going to be great. It's just going to be like as good as a normal magic unit, basically. That's unfortunate. The one thing I did remember just now that I did with Perry was, I think... Wimp and I had female corn, and so we were able to use Perry to give her cavalier access. So we could do like, I don't remember what skill we wanted. I think it might have been just paladin corn for late game somewhere. It was kind of good somewhere. I know you said paladin bad, mm -hmm. but there was like one or two chapters where it was nice uh, to yeah. deal with I mean, any bow users. If you could dive in and, and get the skills out of it, yeah, paladin's an okay class to go to. It's it's just uh, you know it's like any other melee class. You don't really want to stick with it. But if you're just diving in for three levels to get elbow room shelter and maybe defender, okay. Mm -hmm. uh, but I, I wouldn't. I don't really think there is a use case for going to it as a finishing class for anyone in the game. No, I think it was just to Except, get eleven sword magical core and online for the Takumi Wall chapter without having a bow weakness, so we couldn't yeah. like, bolt axe the way through. Sure. So that sounds like C tier to me. If, if, yeah, I, I I think so. Like. Better than Nyx, I think. Um, and, like, Perry is competent at fighting in their first couple chapters. She does have that shelter utility. It's just, she falls off so hard, so fast, after just a couple chapters. And it's it's hard to, compared to a lot of other units in this game, it's really hard to make, to build Perry a, a class path that gets her out of that. Uh, it just, it's really unfortunate. But that she's sucks. just... A yeah. victim of circumstance here. Yeah, but at least she has something, whereas Nyx has nothing for free, really, besides class cannon and utility. And even that. And Heartseeker for Nyx, yeah. Yeah, yeah, Heartseeker, I guess. <laughs> even Heartseeker yeah. with Nyx is like, I'm going to put Nyx in front of an enemy and I hope it's dead after this, because if it's not, oh boy. Yeah, so I dead. mean, there, there, for Nyx, like, there are places where I'd consider just deploying someone just to have Heartseeker. Like, for Chapter 17, it's nice to put Heartseeker on the boss at the end, on, the, on his throne, but... You know, you could just bring Leo. Yeah. Like, okay. That's fair. All right. Six units in a little over an hour. Pretty good. Yeah. We did it. Great. Done and dusted. We're on schedule. Nice. So I guess next time we can uh, we can wrap up the unpromoted Generation 1 squad, maybe some, some pre-promotes, whatever we got. And then after that, I guess it's time for kids. Yeah. So uh, we're cruising right along, finally. <laughs> yep. <laughs> at a high tempo yeah well hey right. that was great thank you for joining once again zoran and uh thanks everyone for watching my pleasure yeah thanks everyone <laughs>